We start our project with building our level loader. The general idea of the level loader is to split the world into a series of tiles and then using the 2D representation stored in some textual file, we will be able to uh, replace the, the definition in the text file with the actual tiles in the real world. Let's look at the example of the textual file that I would like to use to load the level. This represents a 2D layout of the world, which I would like to display on the screen. I was thinking of using either dot as a space symbol, so that means for where there is nothing, or just using a space. Right? Then each of these symbols would represent a specific tile. So let's say the hyphen would represent a simple platform, P would stand for player, one would be an enemy, two would be other kind of the enemy, then plus would be for example some kind of moving platform, and uh, let's say up and down, and then let's create for example a platform that moves left and right, and let's just use the symbol for the greater, right? So the idea would be that the, um, the level loader would read this specification of the world and then read the specification of tiles, so all the tiles that I'm supporting, and then put them at the specific x, uh, y position, which would where x would be uh, this axis, so horizontal axis, and y would be the vertical axis. Right? So let's build our script around that. Instead of typing the scripts in front of you and making millions of mistakes, I've decided to show you the already uh, created scripts and describe the functionality. So what I, what I did, I went to, I created my script folder in my assets and I have created a new c -sharp script and I named it a level loader. Right. So I named it level loader. Since I have this, uh, sorry, level manager. Since I already have this script, I'm not going to add it. And let's look at how my level manager looks like. Level manager, the way I've designed it, is uh, has ability to place objects either at the x, y plane or x, z plane. So it is capable of placing tiles on the xy axis or on xz axis. So it depends if you want to use it in a 2D or a 3D game. Then I have a structure that holds the uh, definition of the tile. Tile holds a specific ID, which is a simple character, 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, hyphen, whatever, and then holds reference to a specific tile. Tile is a game object that will be rendered on the screen. And then the level manager itself specifies what orientation this level manager holds, what is the list of the tiles that can be used, what is the name of the file that holds the definition of the starting level. These two variables we can get rid of. And then in the beginning, when the script loads itself, if there is a definition of a start level, so if we specify what is the start level, it will load that start level. And loading of the start level is this very, very simple script in which I load the definition of the level from my resources and from the directory levels and then the name of the, name of the definition file. When we are using resources.load, so that is when we are using a specific resource in Unity, it has to be placed in the resource folder. So if you look in the assets, in here we have a resources directory, so it has to be placed in the name in the directory resources, right? And then I've specified I'm loading the definition file from directory levels, so that's exactly it, right? So this is my levels directory, and here is the definition of, of my levels. And then, the structure of the file is basically a list of lines in which I specify the IDs of the tiles that I'm using and the dot or a space for, uh, for air, basically, for where there is nothing. So, 
Once I load the resource from the text file, I obtain the textual content of that file through the property text and I obtain the world text. Then I split this text uh, by line, so I use a new, uh, new line character to get all the lines of the text file. And since the definition of the file it's starts from the bottom left, uh, so that means the world, uh, how we define it, starts from the uh, from the bottom left and goes like this. I need to inverse it, right? So if I imagine and this is my position zero zero in the world, I have to start from the very last line to go from the position zero zero. This is my first uh, row, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on, right? It's easier for me to define levels like this than imagining that this is my position zero zero and then defining world going uh, going opposite direction. So I'm going back to the script. I basically go in the reverse order. So I go from the last line until my very first line. Then I obtain that line definition. So that means I get the line in the uh, of, from the current index. So the reverse row index goes from the last line until my first line. My row index so uh, my my index in, in the world is, uh, is is defined as a length of the of the array minus my current uh, reverse row, right? So this with the row index and column index, I obtain the x and y coordinate of the tile that I'm placing, right? So row index represents the x coordinate and column index represents the uh, I'm sorry. Row index represents the 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 y coordinate, so that means how deep this this um, tile is, and column index represents the x coordinate, right? So looking here, this would be my position x zero y zero. This would be position, for example, x fifteen y zero. This would be position x zero y fifteen position fifteen fifteen, right? And then uh, I go for every so uh, I obtain the line so in the line itself I get this full line so of, of all the characters and then I browse uh, every single character on that line so I go for the for every single character on that line I will perform a specific function and what do I do I obtain the ID of the tile which would be you know dot hyphen and so on uh, and then I would uh, you know, if it's a, either a dot or a space, I just continue, I don't do anything else. If that's not the case, I obtain the tile, so from the list of my tiles I get my, uh, I get the, the, the tile the definition, and then if the tile is null, I notify the, the um, developer saying him, hey, this tile doesn't exist, right? So if I could, for example, would use uh, number three, but I wouldn't define a tile with number three. I will notify a developer, hey, you are trying to use a tile that doesn't exist. And then the very last thing, oh, sorry, almost the last thing is that if I'm posi positioning uh, objects on the XY space, I just instantiate that object on the XY coordinate. If I'm positioning in the XZ space, I position it at the x, z coordinate. So x, y coordinate, x, z coordinate, right? And then with no rotation, I will never rotate my tiles. And then the very last thing that I'll do is that uh, I assume that at least one of the tiles that I put on the screen is will be tagged player, and I'll add a smooth follow 2D script um, on, on my camera, which will follow my player. Right, so that is basically it. There is not much to it. So all I'll do, I read the definition of all the IDs in the textual file, and then I add those tiles at a specific x, y coordinate on the screen. Right. Okay. So let's try to add a new level manager. So we'll add a level manager. And we add a component called level manager on top of it, right? So level manager, there we go. And let's try to run our game. Right. 
so nothing happens, it's all still good. And let's add tell that the start level is level 1. Right, so we'll try to run to level, level 1. And when we run this, we get the error, our error, the tile with ID hyphen doesn't exist. Right? So we need to define we need to define the tiles. So let's look how many tiles do we need to define. So looking here, uh, I know that I need to define a tile for player, for hyphen, uh, so for, for platform, uh, for an enemy, and then moving left and there are left and right platform and up and down. So these five tiles. Okay. So let's define them. That's one for player, one for platform. Static platform, left up, left right platform, down platform, and an enemy. Right. Now I still, when I run this, I will still receive the second exception, no reference exception, because the problem is that I haven't assigned a tiles that I'm actually trying to use with this. Right. So in the tutorial to come, the next one, we will actually build uh, our first tile and then try to run the game.